Little boys love their toys. Prepare to be amazed. Prepare to be amazed. Whoa. And Eric Pyburn has a ton of fast ones to choose from. Ta-da! And you put all your cars in there? Yeah. You'll find cars everywhere. But his favorite toy is the one that reminds him of his favorite show. When you play Wheel of Fortune, do you normally win? Yes. Yeah. yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. The puzzle is people. T. There's one T. One K, all right. It's $100. Bing. 300. It teaches him spelling, it teaches him math. A. <gasps> I like to solve the puzzle. Okay. Pat Sajak and Vanna White. Whoa. You got it. <laughs> Nine years old and full of heart, which is a little surprising since most doctors never thought his would last this long. Basically, we're sitting on borrowed time at the moment, and I can say it, but it's a hard pill to swallow. Um, and we've been denied three times already for a heart double lung transplant. And the doctor said the echo's getting worse. So um, we're just taking it slow and doing everything we can. Does Wheel of Fortune help you feel better? <laughs> It's just a show. Wheel of just a show. But it's Wheel that keeps Eric rolling. Wheel of Fortune. He spent most of his young life in the hospital, where those familiar sounds, letters and numbers, gave a nine-year-old boy something to look forward to each night. It's changed his life. It's changed ours. But it, it's what brought him to life. Eric told the Make-A-Wish Foundation he wanted two dreams granted. He wanted to see Mickey Mouse, and he wanted to meet Pat and Vanna. Two years ago, he got to go to Disney World for the first time. And 15 minutes from now, coming up on the road, maybe we'll see if we can make that second dream come true. Hey, you excited, buddy? The roll up the driveway seemed like it took Here we go. forever. Welcome to Channel 10. Thanks. <laughs> Ever since meeting Eric Pyburn, I've been waiting for today's surprise. That looks just like you. <laughs> Hello, this is uh, WTSP Tampa. Barely inside the door, and Eric is already having fun. Am I clear to go get him? Do you want to come see the studio? Sure. With no idea who is around the corner. This is cool. This is cool? Good. You know what? It's going to get cooler. <laughs> we got a surprise for you right here. <laughs> uh, you ready? Right here. Guess who's hey, <laughs> Hey Eric, how are you? It's Pat and Vanna. Hi Pat. Hey Vanna. So, listen, we. Va Hi. I thought your wave to Vanna was much more excited than mine, and we're glad you're here. Now you've been watching Wheel of Fortune for a long time, right? Yep. Are you a good player? Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> sometimes yeah. Vanna, I have a question for you. Yeah. How do you get the letters up on the puzzle? It's like magic. These fingers make these letters light up. He can try, look, but... Look, nothing happens when I... Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Happens I, <laughs> nothing. nothing. <laughs> it's not funny, Eric. Now listen, here's what's going to happen. Uh, Vanna's going to start this puzzle here, and when you know the puzzle, you just shout out the answer, okay? Okay. Here we go. Hmm. Hmm. Pat and Vanna sent a mountain of gifts, along with a memory that will never fade. This is everything to him. I think this is something we are going to be talking about for a very, very long time. That was so amazing! Yeah, wasn't it? Cheese! <laughs> <laughs>
At 83 years old, it's just tougher to get the job done. That broke my heart, especially when I found out how he was getting here to do what he was doing. John's 1995 F-150 truck broke down a few weeks ago. And the repair shop broke it even more. But John wouldn't let that stop him from doing his job. He walks two and a half miles from his house to the Nortons just so he can mow their lawn. It takes him about an hour to get here. And Robert had no idea until a few weeks ago. It shocked me because my first thought is, if you have no transportation, why are you here? Well, that helped me to keep, keep, my, keep me going. Then my days, my work, work days, I call them. He is a dedicated, loyal worker, and his job is his livelihood. It's, what he, it's his hobby, it's his livelihood, it's what he enjoys doing. He's going to cut our yard as long as he wants to cut our yard, and we're going to pay him as long as he wants to cut our yard. On the road in St. Pete, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News. Michael Whitty is new to Largo. A transplant from Ohio, he thought this would be the perfect spot on the perfect night to practice his passions. Every night's a good night for music. Little did he know, he's not the first man to bring his bugle to this beach. People seem to enjoy what I do, so I keep coming out. I think that it's more than a special way to end the day. Ken Decca is a regular at Indian Rocks Beach. Every night, every week. Sunset is 7.59. It's like his second home. The minute they hear the horn, they stop. A place to play for his buddies who never made it home. means the country's not dead. It gives me the chills. What's so emotional about it? It's taps. I mean, that's all I can say, you know. It's, uh, it brings tears to people's eyes to hear him play. The sun's going down, it's, uh, and it's a beautiful place, so it's uh, very emotional. It's this moment of reverence and respect. It's kind of one of those songs that makes you want to smile and cry at the same time, yeah. and a lot of people do. Thanks, guys. 24 notes every 24 hours, a familiar thank you that not even the wind nor waves can compete with. A beautiful way to end the day. On the road, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSP. If I could do this full time, I would, but it doesn't pay the bills. Bills will always be there, but Scott Hand knows you can't waste a beautiful Florida day like this one. Down here, I have uh, 12 months a year. <laughs> and he makes the trip all year long to South Venice Beach, to a place where he can just unwind. Just a man and his shovel. This is actually called a Florida snow shovel. You fill up the basket with the uh, shells and then you sift through it and look for shark teeth. And he's found a lot, big and small. There are some days that I come out and I'll find, you know, 10 teeth. There are some days I've been out and find 900. All year long, he bags them up and takes them home. But the story doesn't end there. The story and these teeth are still 1,400 miles from their destination. What? You thought Scott was just out there picking up teeth for no reason? These 55 teeth are bound from Manchester, New Hampshire to Scott's nephew and dozens of eager students chomping at the bit for these teeth. Come on up, our first two of the week. Diana. Scott's nephew, Steve, is a teacher who thought, what better way to teach kids about shark teeth than to hold some real ones from Florida? They're really big. They have shark teeth. They're, they're, they have, like, large fins. Thank you, Uncle Scott! Uncle Scott's hobby has turned into a much bigger deal than he thought, sending a little bite of his new home to some kids in his old home 
who may otherwise never get a chance to touch nature like this. Just to see their faces like, wow, I want, I want to find some. It's awesome. On the road in South Venice Beach, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSP. Deputy Lanisha Twenty hasn't been on patrol for very long, but this is a job she's always wanted. Yeah, I mean, I, I love getting up at 4 a.m. and coming to work. I mean, it's a good day. <laughs> she does a fantastic job out there. She represents the sheriff's office well. It makes me feel like I'm serving my community. A community she's finding out is full of surprises. It wasn't expected. I went from my heart beating like triple fast to like slowing down to his regular pace. When Deputy 20 pulled into this vacant parking lot a few weeks ago, she thought that it would just be a nice, quiet place for her to sit and do her paperwork without anyone bothering her. But when she heard a stranger knock on her window, she admits she was a little frightened. In the vacant lot by myself, out of training, and she knocks on the door and it's on the window and it's something positive and not negative. That was a good relief, right? Yeah, awesome feeling. An awesome feeling because it turns out that tap was more about care than scare. People like you who naturally go above and beyond make this world a better place for all of us. Thank you so much. Y'all guys are very much appreciated. It's just a little thing, but it's important. It's it? very important. It'll make you feel good. Every day. The note included a gift card to a local barbecue restaurant, but it's the thank you that means the most to the ones whose jobs are often thankless. I think anything where you know the job you're doing is noticed and people appreciate it, it always makes you feel better. And a reminder that there is good news waiting on patrol. So much negativity get put out about law enforcement and just to see the opposite happening, it's a good feeling. On the road in Sarasota, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSP. License plates, like the one on Al Vaughn's car, aren't just handed out. They're earned. So I've always been in really good shape. I take pride in my physical fitness. Six days a week for hours each day, he's here and happy to feel the burn after nearly having the feeling taken away. So I said, Doc, so what's going on? And she said, uh, you have throat cancer. Hit me like a rock. Never saw it coming. Man. I don't have a problem telling you that uh, I got in the car driving home and a tear started coming down my face. You know, because I thought, wow, this is it, the beginning of the end. After starting his treatments, Al had the courage to look in the mirror just one time. His once muscular body was starting to fade away and it scared him to death. After going through months of painful chemotherapy and radiation, Al finally got the courage inside to look back in the mirror once again. He noticed he had lost a lot of muscle, but he knew he had gained a lot of strength, enough to deliver a message to cancer. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm coming after you, you're not coming after me, and I'm going to beat you, and you're not going to beat me, and that's just the way it's going to be, all right? And second place is not an option. And can you believe cancer listened? Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Al Vaughn. At 65 years old, Al earned two new titles, Cancer Survivor and Mr. Universe. It was a big one. Two titles his doctor was thrilled to hear. I, I almost have tears, you know, when I saw it, like he's winning and he brought the trophy in here. It was a very emotional moment. We were all happy. Cancer competed, but it's hard to beat Mr. Universe. I was in it to win it. I wasn't ready to go to that big gym in the sky. On the road, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSP. Does it hurt? This is the day Hannah Christian has been waiting for. Feels weird. After four long weeks, her fingers are finally free. Oh. Free to fire. Oh. Once again. I'm really looking forward to today for a while. <laughs> Not long ago, Very nice. this seminal teen Better. picked up a shotgun and fell in love. It doesn't hurt at all, actually. It feels really good. A total change oh. from her old hobby. No explanation. She loved doing beauty pageants and dressing up and being girly. And then when she went out with her dad and did the shooting, she said it made her feel more powerful. Hannah put the beauty pageant days behind her two years ago when her dad introduced her to guns and shooting at the range. Now she traded in her tiara for a trigger and she's taking aim at a new goal. 
I hope to make the U.S. Olympic team. Uh, it's going to take a little while. I know that. It's going to take a lot of training. Goals are what they are. Anybody can reach them if they work hard enough, I think. I've never seen her grab onto something so hard as shooting. When I shoot, I feel strong and powerful. I don't find that anywhere else. Just relax. From pageants. I like this a lot better. To target. <laughs> yeah. There's beauty. Just a little bit. In both. She did really well today. Oh. On the road in St. Pete's, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, okay. WTSP. All right. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? <laughs> the wheels begin turning early each morning for Donald Nutty. When I hear that car backing up, it's like, okay, Don's okay, Don's gonna be out. Every day begins with these wheels, a biscuit, coffee, and three cookies. Two ninety nine, please. I'm sorry. Two ninety nine. He's a regular. Yep. When when he's not here, we wonder if he's okay. We can drive by his house and check on him. Odds are you won't find him there. <laughs> Donald will already be on his second set of wheels. Every day, rain or shine. I think that he started the whole, you know, root and can collection on a daily basis, probably to escape my grandmother a little bit during the day. <laughs> he made his escape into the neighborhood on two wheels. Decades ago, he built his house and that one and more around the corner. So when he rode up to one of these one day, he wasn't pleased. This neighborhood was too important to him to have it look cluttered. So for the past 25 years, Donald has been on a mission. This is going to be a good day, but I don't know about picking up the cans. It's very few times he doesn't go out. I mean, it's just his thing that he does, and it, he said it keeps him alive, it keeps him going. I am 98. I was 98 in January. People don't tend to believe it. If he can be out there at 98 years old, riding for six hours, I can go for a couple mile jog every day. <laughs> This is how Donald gives back to his community, collecting and crushing. Every day, yeah. including Sunday. No, it doesn't surprise me. I think he'll be doing this till the day he dies. How many other 98-year-olds are riding their bike three hours a day? I don't meet any like that. A lot of the guys are bragging about 50s and 60s. Keep it up, you might get as old as me. Maybe as old, but probably not as driven. All that not in the landfill. Okay, I'm off. After collecting and crushing, there's one more step for Donald. Contributing. You know when he comes here, he's got a load. You gotta come out and help him. He's got a load. It's not one or two bags. I feel pretty damn good. He plans to keep riding as long as he's able, rising with the sun and hunting for cans. All in a day's work for a 98-year-old man who couldn't imagine spending his day any other way. That's what he looks forward to every day. And it keeps him going, it keeps him exercising, and gives him a purpose. He has a purpose. On the road in St. Petersburg, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSP. It's addictive. You want to keep your hips rolled in and angled forward. The Gulfport Casino knows how to tango. For the women, it's all about the shoes. And the nicer the shoes, probably the better dancer they are. <laughs> and dressed in not too high heels, Ruthie Swim's toes are tuned to tango. She looks about the same as when she was 85. She's not aging. I didn't have any idea that she was 100. It, it, she, no, she doesn't look it at all. She's the only one that I know of, that, especially that dances like she dances. I mean, she does tango while dances. Yes, Argentine tango every Tuesday night. You're learning all the time, Ruth. With her same longtime dance partner. Well, wow, we were dancing at Continental Ballroom, and all of a sudden, Ruthie catches my eye during an Argentine tango dance, and she invites me to dance. And I've been hooked on tango ever since. She didn't begin to tango until she was 97. Now at 100, she has no plans to stop. I know that I'm not gonna live forever, and I'm ready to go anytime they want me upstairs. 
but they haven't given, they haven't sent me an invitation yet. So I think I'm still supposed to dance. Reality, I know I've been around a long time. <laughs> And, but, you know, no long, no matter how long you're here, you have something to learn. Ruthie is living proof that you're never too old to stay connected to the world around you and enjoy all the things that you have in your life. On the Road in Gulfport, I'm Bobby Lewis, 10 News, WTSB. Here's another spreader if anybody needs, anybody need a spreader? It's a little frantic. It's hectic. A lot of chaos, I get it. It's not a lot of work if there's a lot of people. It's always like this. This is about it. This is about what it looks like. That's why it's called a frenzy. It's really simple, ready? So you take about a spoonful and just plop them on. But it's towards a good cause. It's a good cause, right? I like peanut butter and jelly. We need some jelly ploppers and we need some jelly spreaders. Like if I'm doing something like this, I like to work quick. Like... We're like, let's do it again. So we did 500. We made a lot of sandwiches, let's put it this way. 17,450 sandwiches before today. Simple thing we can do to make a big change. There's a guy, let's give him some sandwiches. You hungry, man? We got some sandwiches for you, man. Thank you. Yeah, God you got, bless you. God bless, buddy. God bless. That's what it's about, right? So it's about right there. Do you know anyone who might need some food? I'll take one. We have a whole box. Okay. You. Okay, thanks. What's your name? Uh, you guys hungry? No that makes me happy. It makes me proud. I got food. Now I know I can eat. Now I got enough. See? I got enough. Hope for humanity is no longer lost. It's just an amazing thing to see other people um, showing up and just giving back to the community. It's not just a sandwich. It's not just a meal. It's more than just that.